Hello and welcome. My name is Laulu Akonde and you are on to Inside Sources. My take for the week. First of all, we categorically condemn the Okoma killings of Nigerian soldiers. It is a barbaric act which assaults all of us as a people and it is completely unacceptable. It should be properly punished. Now, let's avoid any escalation in order to protect innocent citizens in the affected community. And more importantly, let us do everything possible to honor the memories of all the 17 gallant officers who died in the line of duty in Delta State. Secondly, today, we want to join our voices to those yearning for the true Nigerian constitution, the people's constitution. In the last 25 years of this civilian rule, we have depended on the constitution that was clearly an imposition of the military. Nigeria now needs a constitution that is freely negotiated by the nationalities in this country. People have said the 99 constitution is 90% of that of 1999 and all that, but clearly, the time has come for us as a people to negotiate a true people's constitution. One that is really negotiated by we, the people. The overriding element that must be in that new constitution is the enforcement of true federalism. That is, federating units having the power to develop at their own pace. The current over-centralization that has continued since military incursion into our politics all through even civilian regimes has to end. A new federal constitution must ensure the place of state police, devolution of powers, and an equitable negotiation of the issue of resource control. In my view, that new constitution should adopt a parliamentary system of government. That system is useful because not only is it cheaper than the current presidential system, which is expensive, a parliamentary system also promotes accountability and it enhances transparency. Under such a system, there is no hiding place away from the people by whoever is the head of state, because the head of state must confront the major issues of the day as he or, or she sits in the parliament regularly to answer questions. We need a head of government who we have to answer to Nigerians publicly and regularly. Whereas in a presidential system, the president can be cocooned away, sending out aides to deal with the major issues of the day in public. That has not helped us in the last 25 years, where the president behaves as if it's in favor to answer questions publicly. We can still have a ceremonial president who will be the one to convoke the parliament, and that office will remain as a symbol of our national unity. But we need a people's constitution, and it must assert that political power belongs to the people. A constitution that holds the political elite responsible for the state of the nation, freeing the states and national assemblies from what is currently an overbearing control by the executives. A constitution that should include the Bill of Rights. These are rights that are enforceable by law, the right to life, the right to education, health, and all of the fundamental human rights must be guaranteed and enforceable so that government officials will not be able to violate such human rights of Nigerians. In conclusion, this new constitution should be championed by the president and the National Assembly. We all know that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu was an active participant in the quest for troop federalism, and he was one of the leading advocates for sovereign national conference. And then when he became governor in 1999, he and his attorney general took the federal government to court, all the way to the, to the Supreme Court, on the issues of devolution of powers. For instance, the right of a state to create local governments, and they won. So, the president now has the opportunity to make a true people's constitution happen in that same spirit. When he was declaring his interest to run for president, he said it was his lifelong ambition that has now happened. It should now be his lifelong mission to ensure that Nigeria has a true people's constitution. If he does this, he will easily write his name in gold in the annals of Nigeria's history. And that is my take for the week.
Welcome back. Today we continue the conversation on the future of Nigeria. And I have a development professional uh, who was formerly the Director General of the Bureau of Public Service Reforms uh, with me today, uh, Dr. Joe Haber. Dr. Joe Haber, you are welcome to Inside Sources. Thanks very much, Laulu. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for the work you do on, on, on Twitter, trying to, uh, to straighten <laughs> the discourse, you know, along the lines of uh, uh, some kind of elevated uh, discussion. Thank you. So today, uh, I, I want you to talk about the future of Nigeria. And I normally start the conversation by asking my guests that if you look at where we are right now as a country, do you think we are on course to a great Nigeria that many of us, if not all of us, envisage? Uh, it's, it's difficult to answer that question um, without some context. Mm. So, so the first answer would be, it doesn't feel like that at the moment. And mm. I remember when, um, when the elections, the last elections were being contested, mm. I, I wrote a document about what the new president should do. And the very first thing I said was that the new president should create a sense of movement, a mm. sense that something is happening, that something is changing, that right. we're going somewhere. Um, and I think, you know, with due respect to, to, to the other presidents, I don't think we've had that sense since the Obasanjo era. So I felt this was something that was important. Means since to, after the Obasanjo era. Since after the Obasanjo era. Uh, so I felt this was something that I needed to come back for mm. people to feel a sense of hope, a sense of pride, to right. see certain indices that mm. would give them uh, some reassurance that we are, we are making progress in, in some areas. So, so that's, the, that's the first answer I would say. The second mm. answer is that almost inevitably we will improve because mm. of a number of indices we have. We have a large population, we have natural resources, we have very resourceful uh, people, mm -hmm. we have highly educated people in, um, in various walks of life across right. the world. And if you look at the countries that have developed over the last 50 years or so, yeah. they seem to share that similar kind of ingredients. Firm. You know, if you look at China, India, uh, India Brazil, all of this Indonesia com coming up, they mm. share these same characteristics of, you know, a large population, some mm. natural resource, some uh, industry in, ter right. in, in, in terms of the people. So, so I think... Um, I think it just needs that spark right. uh, to, to, to get us on the path that to, to, to should that be. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I like the, the word spark because, you know, um, and I also agree with you, you know, talking about the companies, the ingredients, you know, uh, resident people, not just that it's large, very resilient, you know, mm -hmm. people that can make anything happen, yeah. both at home and abroad. Yeah. But also true, this was exactly the scenario in 1960. You know, this was exactly what was said. And in 1960, China, you know, uh, we were even ahead of China in some uh, projections. So, so the question is, how do, we, how do we get that spark of which you speak? Mm. What do we have to do? I don't think it was exactly the same in 1960 um, mm. because we, well, even if it was, we then had a, a very damaging civil war mm. um, that actually set us back quite a lot, uh, sure. questioned some of the fabric of, of society as we as we knew it then um mm. i think i think um after sort of the mid 70s right. the public services stopped functioning as as we knew it yeah um we mm. we we had um we had a different system of government at the time we had a a parliamentary system of government at the time which is different from the from what we have now. the presidential one that we have now uh, we had uh, functional regions that were almost, you know, competing with each other right. positively. Right. Not not the kind of uh, not the kind of uh, yeah, not the kind of divisive uh, uh, the distrust that we now have. So so some of those ingredients were were there. They were truncated by by the civil war and truncated by military rule. I think military rule actually set us back. Quite a lot. Mm. Um, I, I, you know, a lot of people, particularly young people who who didn't experience the brutality of, of military rule, 
will tell you, oh, maybe the military should should come mm. back and uh, and uh, uh, some of us that did uh, know that the the worst kind of democracy is better than the best kind of of military rule. Mm. Um, some will say, oh, perhaps we should have a benevolent dictator. Um, for some reason, Africa doesn't tend to produce benevolent dictators. <laughs> the dictators we produce are, are hardly ever benevolent, mm. so, save maybe for one or two. So, so, so I think, um, I think, and, and lastly, I think the world is in a different place. Uh, the world is in a different place with the kind of technology it has, yeah. the the access that young people and everyone has to more information, right. much more than we had in in, in 1960. Right. Uh, the ability of people to to create. So we have we have uh, the second most productive film industry in the world in our mm. in our Nollywood. Uh, mm. We are we we are world leaders in financial technology and yeah. payments. Mm -hmm. So there are a few things that that, are, that are, can be built on. Mm, interesting. Uh, so so I, I want us to go, you know, based on uh, what what your experience has been uh, and, and and your profession as a development uh, practitioner. I want us to go into civil service reforms. But first, let's talk about the parliamentary system of government. Now, um, based on my experience in government for eight years. I have come to the conclusion, and I, and I want to hear your take. I've come to the conclusion that if we have a parliamentary system of government, uh, the, the person who is at the helm of government, who we call president now, uh, will be a prime minister and will have to face uh, the parliament almost on a daily basis, at least, you know, uh, take questions, which is part of the parliamentary tradition from the opposition, general questions every week, that will make it impossible for him uh, not to confront the daily issues of state, mm. you know, publicly. Mm. I am of the op opinion, based on what I've seen serving in the presidency for eight years, that that will serve Nigeria well, especially in two areas. It will increase accountability and it will improve transparency. So I think that Nigeria will be better served by a parliamentary system, besides even the issue of the cost and the expensive nature of the presidential system. Mm. Do you think that the parliamentary system can be more helpful or you think the presidential system is best or better of the two? No, I don't think the presidential system is better. And, and over the last uh, you know, 24 years where we've run this presidential system, 25 years in May, yeah. um, we can see the flaws um, you've talked about the the expense. Uh, mm. There's the issue of the the the, uh, the ease with which power can be abused, which mm. without accountability, uh, the way in which monies can be spent without mm. accountability. Right. Um, and it's not just uh, it's not just at the executive level. Yep. We we also have the legislature who basically. Mm take as much money as they want because they, mm. you know they have the power of appropriation yeah, yeah. Um, so so we, we we simply have a system and you know and then of course even at state level oh. you have a you it's know you have a system yeah. where governors are virtually emperors and um, and the legacy of military rule which is mm. one of the legacies of military rule which is the the land use act basically gives them ultimate power. It, they're supposed to allegedly hold the land on it behalf does. of all of us, but they give it to who they wish. Uh, mm. and so if you, con if you control the power of, of one of the uh, factors of, of production, production, you control that, you basically control the, the, the State House of Assembly, mm. uh, you appoint into the judiciary, you're basically, you're basically an emperor. Um, and so we need to find a different way where, and you know, I often say that as citizens, we're, we're like in a, in a one chance vehicle that doesn't have any brakes because we, 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 the people who are supposed to look at some of these things are the people benefiting from it. So it's never going to change. change. So, so I think if we could, and I, I was very pleased to, to read, um, yesterday, that uh, a group of people called the Patriots have started right. to talk about how we can get a, a new constitution. New constitution right. I think I think if we if we wait for the National Assembly to enact a new constitution, it's probably not going to happen. 
Uh, most presidents would not want to give up the power that comes from the, you know, the presidential system of government. So it's up to the citizens to continue to demand that, that we get a president, we get a, a constitution that we, the people, actually give to ourselves. Mm. And I've challenged some of my, uh, some of my colleagues who are professionals right. that they should do something about this. I don't, I see no reason why the Nigerian Bar Association cannot draw up a draft constitution and put it in the public space and let's debate it. Mm. Um, I see no reason why the, 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 the other, you know, so-called professionals, the doctors, right. the accountants, the, the engineers mm. cannot think about, okay, how can we come together and think about a better system? Very, 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 very important, you know, and, you know, just as a point of information, since we talked about it, the, the, the 1999 constitution has amended, uh, which we, uh, you know, which is enforced today. I remember the story that in 1999, when President uh, Obasanjo was sworn in, nobody had a clean copy <laughs> of that constitution. You know, as at the time it got into office, there was no clean copy of it. I mean, that just tells us how rowdy, you know, and how chaotic the promulgation of the decree that became a uh, constitution uh, was then. Which goes to your point, and, you know, I, I like the fact that you referred to what the Patriots said uh, earlier this week about getting a true people constitution. So I wanted to ask, the, the, the National Assembly has set up, you know, I think they do this regularly, uh, amendment of the constitution and stuff like that. How do you think the the people of Nigeria, you know, the different sectors, how do you think they can effectively engage this current process, you know, to 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 to, to deliver a, a a a true constitution, a people's constitution? This is what has been disappointing to me personally. Right, that none of the presidents we've had seen the inadequacies of this constitution yeah. has tabled an executive bill to to, mm. to to amend the constitution or to promulgate a new a constitution. New At least write it, put it out, let's debate it. Right? Let's know where the problem is yeah. in not enacting it. Right. The, the, the other reason why citizens are felt somewhat disconnected is because the amendments that have been done so far have not gone to the issues. Mm. that affect the citizens. It's, it's been more of, oh, give every legislator parliamentary immunity or whatever, those kinds of things. Uh, now, we're beginning to tackle some real issues. Do we have state police or not? Mm. And you see that citizens will engage because yeah. we're talking about our security. Right, here. right. So, so if, if we start to mm. debate issues like, should we have... Should we have uh, state police? police yeah. What kind of uh, 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 fiscal federalism should, should we, we really have? have? Should we have a federal government that consumes 52% of all resources mm. um, while 36 states and, 40, uh, and 774 and for, for local, local governments, governments uh, 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 spend the rest? Should we really have an independent local government system? Given that states are the federating units in any federation, yeah. not local governments. Not local governments. So, should we really have three tiers of government? Mm. Recognizing the importance of of local government, but why, you know, do we want to continue to pretend that we have that, three tiers? That, that we have three tiers, three independent tiers. If you have those kind of conversations, Nigerians would engage. Mm. But the, the the issues we've been discussing and the amendments that we've been having to to the constitution have not been those kinds of issues that have, that, that, that have that gone to, to, the, to the people. To the people, yeah, the things it, it, that affect the people. Interesting. Um, I, I, I had a conversation last week with Chief uh, uh, Pa Ayuade Banjo, who is uh, uh, an Afeni Ferry uh, leader. And one of the things he said to me <laughs> was that, you know, to your point that no, no president has changed these things since 1999, even though, like I, like I know, uh, even Obasanjo did not have a clean copy. You know, uh, nobody has changed it. He said, because, you know, the, the, the powers, you know, that the presidents have on that, that constitution is just too, yeah. just too huge, yeah. you know. Uh, it is. But, 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 but my, my, my question, you know, and, you know, since this is a conversation, uh, uh, Dr. Joe, is that what is the purpose of power, you know, if it is not for transformation? You know, so, so why has it been such a big deal that we have people holding power and not using it 
to transform the life of the people, mm. especially when it is not a monarchy. Mm. You know, um, it's going to be maximum for a president eight years. Mm. You're going to be out of office in eight years. Mm. You know, um, and people are going to talk. You're not going to shut people's mouth. You know, if you manage uh, to whatever you do for eight years, a day will come when people will say, hey, look, this is your result. Mm. Why is it difficult for our political elites to understand that? Is there something, you know, what, what do you think about that? What do you reflect on this, uh, Dr. Joe? I, I, to be honest, Laolo, I'm beginning to believe that we've designed a system that makes sure that power is not used for positive purposes. Right. And that's what I'm beginning to believe now. Uh, I, I went into government doing academic research on, right. on uh, the importance of political will. Um, I came out of government after four years doing academic research on when political will is not enough. Wow. And, and, and I'll give you, I'll give you an example. We're talking about the uh, implementation of the Orosan report, which we've been talking about for yeah. uh, 12 years now, at least 12 yeah. years. Yeah. Um, during that time, um, the former president, President Buhari, uh, you know, uh, Stated at least on two occasions privately right. that he really wanted to implement this this report. Yes, um, uh, Vice President Oshibajo, who you worked closely with, yeah. did the same thing, and in fact invited me after I'd left the uh, after I'd left Within office to come and present to the economic management team about yeah. how we could actually um, implement this work. The problem is that you have bastions of power. Mm. You have a national assembly that is daily creating new agencies, daily. There's virtually no law that passes mm -hmm. through the National Assembly that doesn't come with the creation of a new agency. There's virtually none. Mm. If you look at the, if you look at the, uh, the bills right. pending before the National Assembly now, you see that some 70-80% are establishment bills to establish one agency the or, the or the other. So you have, you have the National Assembly uh, doing that. You have, the, um, you have the executive. You have a constitution that says, look, once the money comes, share it into three. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you have no right to ask any questions as, as to how that money <laughs> is used. Right. Yeah. When I worked in the UK, um, we, those of us in, in Downing Street had to go to 11, 11 Downing Street's every quarter to go tell the, the, the chancellor of the exchequer what we did with the money for the last three months before you release any more money. Every quarter. Every quarter. We had to go every quarter. And you were working then in the office of the prime minister. Yeah, in the office of the prime minister. You had to go every quarter to go see the chancellor of the exchequer to say, okay, this is what we did with the last money you released before he can Get give you any more money. Whereas here, once the money is shared, is gone. if you choose, you can use it to build churches, you can build mosques, you can choose to send a man to the moon if that's what you, if that's what you as governor Once feel again. that is a priority of your people. You don't have to do health, you don't have to do education, mm. you don't have to look after your environment, nothing. And so, so, mm. so this is, we've, we've designed something that is virtually unworkable. Mm. And that's why I think, you know, yes, one cannot say, oh, you must go back to the drawing board before anything at all works, because that's difficult. It's right. difficult to it's difficult to get a new constitution. And many people will say, perhaps quite rightly, that oh, even the best constitutions are implemented by people. I mean, you, know, yeah. you, you have to have the people to implement it. I, I while that is partially true you can actually design in and design out certain things, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, in the U.S., mm -hmm. there's a Bill of Rights. Right. It's not negotiable. It's, right. it's, it's a Bill of Rights that everybody has. has. You know, 10 things that every citizen knows, mm -hmm. right? So you can, you can, there are certain things you can design in and there are certain things you can design out. Just like when people say, oh, state police will never work. Governors will abuse it. Are they not already abusing it? Do mm. we have security now? Mm. Is the issue not okay? Let's put in safeguards rather than rather just say it will never work. work. Yeah, let's put in safeguards. How is it going to be funded? Let's put our heads together and think through mm. a solution. How do we stop it from becoming a political weapon during elections? Let's, let's think through that, that and put in the right kind of clauses. But just saying, oh, 
this, this, uh, we shouldn't change them. So, okay, is it working now? No, it's not it's working. Not okay, working. so how do we get it to work? Only God can help us. So that's usually the answer, <laughs> you know. But so, so, so I think, I think it's possible to actually mm. design in certain safeguards, design yeah. in certain things that, that constrain this kind of, uh, behavior that we currently have. I wanted to ask you, I would, you, you, you made the point about it, but I want to also look at it closer. The governors, you know, I mean, I, I was going to say that they behave like monarchs. You said they behave <laughs> like emperors. <laughs> Don't you think, or let me say, I think that, yes, we have issues in the center, no doubt about it, mm -hmm. you know. But at times the governors, some of the governors, and I'm not saying all the governors, you know, there are some of them that are doing excellent work, mm -hmm. you know, that we know about. Mm -hmm. But the governors get away with blue murder because there is no focus on what is happening in the states. Everybody, most of us, are focused on uh, Abuja. What do you think about that? And then how can we begin to hold the governors more responsible, at least the way we try to hold the president responsible, in your view, Dr. Joe? Okay, so, so let's start by going back to use of resources. Mm. The federal government consumes 52%. Yeah. Most of the issues that affect Nigerians are things done by the federal government. Mm. Monetary policy. Yeah. Um, security. Yeah. And, def and mm -hmm. that's why a governor will say to you, I don't have control, control over the police. Don't I don't do the control. Call me chief security yeah, officer. they call me chief security <laughs> officer. I can't direct anybody. So what do you want me to do? Mm. Right? So again, it's back to the system. We've designed a system that makes it difficult to hold the governors accountable. Mm. Right? And, and I'm hoping that things like, things like state police, of course, you would always have certain things that the federal government is responsible for. Right? Yeah. Monetary, monetary, monetary policy, policy, foreign, foreign relations, you know. Uh, defense of, of, yeah, of the of territory the and all of that. Yeah, there will always be some things. But if you, if you take a look at our constitutions from 1960 to date, right. the exclusive legislative list has constantly expanded with every new constitution. Mm. With every new constitution, there's more and more to, to the, this, to this to, to the, to the, center. Yeah, to the, to the federal government. So, so, so because the, the Nigerian, would look at, okay, what's happening with my economy? And it's, it's a monetary policy issue. issue. Why am I insecure? Is a government, is a, is a federal government uh, uh, responsibility? responsibility. Um, what about the resources I have, the oil and the, and the solid minerals, federal government? Uh, no so, resource control. Yeah, so, so, so what do I... It's almost like, okay, so whatever I get from my governor, I'm grateful for. That's, that's, what, that's how it comes across. Mm. There are areas of concurrent um, responsibility, responsibility, like education and health, but yeah. there's no clarity. Mm. So, so you, have, you have the federal government who should really be looking at the tertiary, yeah. education and tertiary healthcare. Health. Establishing um, uh, uh, unity schools, unity schools, right? Establishing unity schools. Somebody will wake up in the in the in the center of government and say, "Oh, we're going to do uh, one thousand primary health care centers in in all the in all the, the local, local governments. governments and all sorts of stuff." So that lack of clarity makes it difficult to know who to hold responsible. It makes it difficult to know what to hold the governors responsible for. for. And that's why in a lot of cases, once a governor does roads, he's the best thing since last bread. Plenty. Because at least that one they can see. They can see. Right? <laughs> they can see that one. So so if if we oh, if we had more clarity that says, look, secondary education, primary education, your responsibility, this is where the money goes for it. Mm. Right? This is where the money goes for it. This is so so we we take this, we we put this. 100% of the resources back on the table mm. and think what is a sensible sharing formula. Yeah. And, and, and that's, why, that's why it worked in the 60s because you, you had a, a smaller core, a smaller center right. to which the regions donated power. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. but, but 
the people living in the regions knew that their regions were responsible for free primary education. They yeah. knew that. Yeah. They knew that their regions were responsible for, for um, free for health, free health, you know. exporting agricultural crops, right. all of those kinds of things. Yeah. That's, I think, what we need to go back to before, um, uh, before we can get cleaner focus on, mm. on, on, on what the governors are really responsible mm. for. Well, you know, yeah. So, so uh, still on that. So, so, I mean, I think you said it, but let me just uh, amplify it a little bit. So, the the, the states have, you know, uh, responsibility for human capital development issues, health, and education. You know, and I think, especially now that their their funding seems to have gone up, you know, in terms of the uh, amount, I think that a, 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 a lot they, they have a lot of resources yeah. already. Yeah. You know, uh, and I don't think many of them have managed. I mean, look at look at the question of the, as, as simple as the question of the award. You know that uh, that labor and federal government are doing. Mm. You know, how many states are doing it? Mm. You know, even mm. though you know they 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 they, 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 they what they get monthly mm. has gone up. Mm. You know, in view of the fact that you know subsidy uh, is no longer there. And the fact that the naira has been the value, uh, the value. so mm. when you turn the dollars, it gets more, you know. So, so I, so, so I think that the governors, you know, uh, have to do a lot more. But you are right that you know they can hide under some of yeah. these uh, obscure, yeah. Yeah. you know. So federal government too is putting his hand, even agriculture too, yeah. you know, you know, yeah. quite a bit of uh, yeah. confusion. I remember, you know, uh, when uh, the National Economic Council. Uh, in the last eight years of the Boali or Shibadi administration, was trying to develop a, a, a national livestock transformation plan. Yes. You know, and uh, from nowhere, you know, and that was the NEC, National Economic Council, you know, mm -hmm. which had all the governors. Mm. Uh, from nowhere, the Ministry of Agriculture just came up with the idea of Ruga, <laughs> you know, and totally messed up, yeah. you know, the thorough work that the council, that had the governors had done, you know. So, so even in areas of agriculture, areas of education and health, which normally, the governor should have unfettered, uh, unfettered, uh, you know, control. Mm. You know, if, if, if we may say. Mm. But I agree with you that indeed the federal government over the years have also uh, messed up the, you know. So in terms of the perception and, for the people, yeah, the people yeah. don't know who to who, yeah. who the responsible place. Yeah, and, and I agree with you that a governor that wants to do well will, uh, and, and a number have. Yeah, yeah. given all the, the constraints. Yeah, yeah, I'm exactly. from. I'm from a boy state. The, right. the current uh, minister of, of works, works, who mm -hmm. was our governor, yeah. did fantastically well. Yeah. You yeah. know, for for the eight years he and, was and there. That's, that's very true. And and, and left a, left a legacy mm -hmm. that would last, mm -hmm. you know, for true. generations true. to come. Yeah. Um, Lagos is doing well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's yeah. doing well. Uh, Bono seems to be do, doing also one well. of the excellent there ones. Few, yeah, there are a few that have that understands the yeah that that, that understand that. Look, I'm there for four years, possibly eight. I need to I need to leave the place better than I met it. Mm. Um, mm. But there is no. Um, there is no requirement. That's the problem. Mm. There's no requirement. Or no so, mandate. So no, no, no mandate. So, mandate. So, so if you, yeah. So, so the, so the, the, the second, um, uh, uh, the, the, the part of our constitution that talks about health and education says it's not justiciable, mm. right? Whereas you have, you have countries like Brazil where it is justiciable. You have a Somebody right. Can go to you court. have a right to healthcare. You actually have a right. You have a right to be prescribed drugs, and not just any drugs. You have a right to be prescribed the most expensive drug for your condition. Wow! So the government can't even say, "Oh, no, we're only giving you the cheap one." You actually have a right to to ask for the most expensive, and it's enshrined in the constitution. In constitution. Look at that! And 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 what they do is that their constitutions have a a, a sunset clause. That means after every 20 years or so, there's an automatic review. Mm. And so it is brought up to date wow. with current realities. Those are the kinds of things that I think would help. And it's interesting, you know, to, to make that point, even as the constitutional amendment uh, is, is going on, yeah. you know, to consider how, you know, this kind of thing can become uh, justiciable, like you said. You know, I mean, look at this recently, uh, 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 Femi Falano went to court on the issue of price, uh, control board and yeah. actually got the call to order, you know, but of course, 
you know, we saw how that uh, ended. Maybe if we have a situation where, like in Brazil, some of the people's rights, yeah. the, the right of I the citizen, the I enshrined the constitution. Yeah. It, might, it might also Yeah, that might right also to human helpful. development. If right. it's enshrined in the constitution, then the governor has to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it, it, it's very important that we pay a lot more attention to what is happening in the states. I agree which, with you. Which is also the reason why, you know, the idea of devolution of powers yes, is, is quite uh, a popular stuff. Now, so let's shift gears and come to public sector reforms. So, so in, in the kind of future that we believe that Nigeria has, um, how we arrange the public service is such a big deal. And I want to, you know, uh, uh, put it to you this way. So, when I came into government, you know, in 2015, as, as a political appointee, um, this, the salary that was, uh, you know, put before me, I remember my boss, you know, just wondering that, look, are you sure you can take this uh, job? Knowing that, I mean, I came from the United States. The, court, the, the financial court that I had to take, you know, uh, to accept the job, but in my own case, I didn't find out that even the civil servants was even worse. Much worse. Much worse. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the difference was even, I mean, while I was having what they thought was, uh, you know, oh, this is a big salary compared to what I was coming from, it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> but I found out to my shock mm. that the civil servants who are pensionable, who have been there, their salaries. So I said to, I said to you know, uh, many of the people that work, I said, this is just a joke. Mm. Don't you think that one major aspect of the public service reform must be the question of the remuneration, Dr. Joe. It, it must be, and I, I, I say that my, my biggest failing as DG of the Bureau of Public Service Reforms uh, was not reforming the salary system sufficient to keep myself in, in office. I, <laughs> I simply couldn't afford to continue to, wow. to, to serve after, after four years. Um, so, so, but we, we need to go back to, um, we need to go back to why it is this way. Mm. Um, again, you need to trace it back to military rule, where the public service, the civil service, is an inconvenience, right? Yeah. Under military rule, it's an inconvenience. Because it's, it's, it's there, it's there to, to, to ensure checks and balances. Which military rule interested. is command and control. Right. So, so because of that, it was systematically weakened mm. over decades. Well, yes. And therefore, you get a, a director. To be a director in the civil service, you need to have put in a minimum of 27 years to be a director. Your salary is less than, is less than 300,000 naira. Uh, and so if you become a director at 27, 27, uh, in, years, in 27 years in service, right. um, the maximum you can be there is another, what, eight years before yeah. you have to voluntary, you have to mandatorily Indeed. retire. When you mandatorily retire, your pension is less than 200,000 a month. And, and this is you who the people in your village see as director in the federal well, service. Exactly. <laughs> director in the federal <laughs> service. He's a big man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so because of that, you can't attract the best talent. Mm. There was a time that they were giving automatic uh, employment to um, to people that made first class degrees and, and uh, uh, second class upper Opa. degrees. Um, they were just there waiting for the, the appointment for, from Shell or from Mobile or, mm, yeah. or somewhere else. Right. You know, they just hung on there for a few months right. until, until they got something better. So, so because of that, you don't get the, the, the kind of people um, mm. coming to coming to work in the public service that the public service needs, needs. And, and, and desires. Give you an example of, uh, of Singapore. So mm. I, I met a, a guy in Oxford, he's a, he's a director in, in, in the civil service right. in, in Oxford, in, in uh, Singapore. Right. Um, the government paid for his master's degree in Oxford. The government paid for his doctorate degree in Oxford. Um, wow. There's a bond that he had to sign, of right. course, that uh -huh. he would work for, I don't know, 10 years or so. And, you know, I was, I was just asking him a few things about how his country works. And I was like, okay, do you, do you have issues of uh, teacher truancy? And I said, teacher truancy, what's that? what's that? You mean teachers don't turn up to work? No, we don't have any such issue. 
Wow. Um, do you what's the what's the pay parity between the the public and the private sector? And he said, virtually identical. You mm. Choose where you want to go want and to go. work. Of course, there will be a little bit of um, a little bit of difference right. to account for your privilege of exercising state power, which you cannot, yeah. which you I cannot quantify. Mm -hmm. True, you, true. You know, but yeah, you 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 live a decent life working in mm. the public sector. So so we've got this system where because of the military. Uh, because of military rule, right. the civil service, the public service has become a, a necessary evil, a, a, a nuisance. Because of uh, the oil resources that right. we 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 uh, discovered, right. uh, the public service is mm. no longer an engine of growth. So, so if you if you work in many other countries, look. The public service is the one that, if our competitive advantage is, is tourism, mm. they're the ones that make sure that the tourists come. Yes. If our competitive exactly. advantage is, is the movie industry, they are the we'll ones sure, that make sure, sure we that, uh, yeah. So all of these things, the public sector creates the environment for the economy to grow. Mm. Here, it is seen as a drain mm. on, on, on the economy. And you see, you hear throwaway comments like our public service is bloated. Bloated as against what? How many? We have one of the smallest public services in Africa. Interesting. One of the smallest. Wow. As in terms of expenditure, uh, in terms of in terms of government expenditure, we have one of the least. Is that so? In I, I, think, I didn't know that yeah. myself. So, but but the problem is we don't produce enough. So because mm, of that, right. because we don't produce enough, you're using ninety percent to pay salaries. That's the problem. That's, the That's problem. why it looks it looks like, like, like looks it, bloated. It looks bloated. Yeah. Although there are also the issue of uh, ghost workers, though. Quite no, there are there, there's issue of ghost workers. There's issue of a number of redundancies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A number of people who are redundant, and and that's because the place is lopsided. It's unbalanced, and it's unbalanced because everybody wants to go to CBN. Everybody wants to go to NMPC. Everybody <laughs> wants to go to to to. Uh, 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 FRS. Uh, Everybody mm. wants to go to Nimasa and NCC mm. because, of course, it, yes, it, it, a driver much, yeah. in those places earns more than a director in the civil service. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you you then have people who are you know looking for so called juicy places, and then the people who should actually deliver services to the people. You don't oh, have no, enough. Don't for them. You don't have enough policemen. You don't have enough teachers. You don't have enough, mm. you know, uh, uh, military personnel. You don't have enough people collecting taxes. Mm. You don't have enough people, you know, ensuring that the right quality of services are delivered to, to the, the people. people. You don't have enough of any of those. So, so it's a, it's a, it's an mm. imbalance rather than a bloating. This is this, this is a very interesting point. So, so in your view, uh, what has to happen? What what, what would be your recommendation? Uh, what, what what would be the main priorities? you know, for for an effective public sector reforms at this time? Well, I often say to people that our, our public services will improve the, the day our politicians want it to improve. That's the day it will improve. So it comes back to, to the political. It comes leadership. everything like That's you said, hinges on leadership. Yeah. So if you if you if you're a if you're a politician or a, you know a, a minister let's even say you're a minister. If you're a minister whose idea of 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 how to work is I'm going to flood the place with consultants. I'm going to bypass these civil servants because they don't know anything. Mm. They're going to slow me down. I'm only here for two years or four years. The cycle continues. Mm. The cycle continues. It's a different thing when you are forced to use them. And so, as an example, when I was DG, I had donors funding experts for me. Okay. But none of those experts were allowed to report to me directly. You must report through your director, mm. your civil servant director. Oh, I see. Now, what that means is, A, you must make sure that that director understands what he's coming to say to me, first of all. <laughs> yeah. Secondly, that that director owns it. So, so there's a rub-off. Yeah, there's a rub-off. And, 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 and then it doesn't distort the, the hierarchy the, 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 the because what the, what the civil servants will do is they wait for you to make a mistake, mm. which you will. Yeah. I mean, they've been They'll there be watching 30 years, you. 35 years. You will make the mistake. It's like a trouble. You will get into <laughs> trouble. You will, you know. So, so, so it's, it's, 
It's ensuring that we have the kind of leadership that is able to say, look, these civil servants went to the same university as everybody did. Yeah. Some of them did better. Yeah, not true. These civil servants have probably more, had more training than anybody in the public sector did, in the private, in private sector, sector did. I remember early in 2015 when we banned uh, foreign training mm. or restricted foreign training. A number of global training institutions went out of business. Wow. Because their, their number one client was Nigeria. Oh, no. They went out of business. You know, the, the Royal Institute for Public Administration, RIPA, that has been in existence for over 100 years, went out of business. Wow. So, so it's, not, it's not a lack of capacity. It's a lack of challenge. And then when that lack of challenge subsists for decades, mm. even your own brain will atrophy if you, have, if you are not given anything to do. That's true. And that's why in some, in some countries... Is that it's actually something you can take your employer to court for, not yeah. giving you work. If your employer doesn't give you work, you can actually yeah. sue as mental abuse. Which so, is so, it? Which it is. Yeah, which it, it is. is. Yeah. So, so we just need to, mm. we need to reconfigure a number of things. Interesting. This is, uh, this is very interesting. Now, so still on the public sector reforms now, um, the question of corruption. So, yes, we said it. Uh, a director hands 300,000 naira. It's a joke, no doubt about it. And then the director uh, sits or I mean, reviews a file, a contract file, you know, 300 million, 400 million, 1 billion, and all of that. And it turns out that quite a good number of those civil servants own property that has no correlation to their income. I can say in Abuja, for instance, that there are many hotels and estates, you know, that are owned by these same uh, civil servants whose salary is 300,000 300, a month, mm. you know. And we see all these things, mm. you know, and it's, it has become, you know, just that's the way it goes. Mm. Many of those directors who I, I argue are not well paid, mm. They managed to send their children to, to school in, in, in London, mm. in, in, in the UK, mm -hmm. in Netherlands, mm -hmm. even in China. Mm. And the, some of them managed to even have, uh, 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 you know, multiple homes. So that tells us that, you know, of course, it's, the, the salary itself is a joke. But the more uh, 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 worrying problem, in my view, is the corruption mm -hmm. that is there. Mm. So, so how do we, uh, Dr. Joe, begin to deal with the question of corruption? you know, okay. especially in the public service. Okay. First of all, we mustn't excuse corruption because of low pay, mm. right? Everybody takes a job knowing how much that job pays. Yeah, yeah, so true. it's not an excuse that, yeah. oh, mm -hmm. my salary is low and that's why I'm they corrupt. It's, mm. it's not an excuse. Where well, you left the job, well, partly because exactly, you, you exactly. just couldn't pay your way. Anymore. Exactly. So, so we mustn't excuse that at all. Um, but let me tell you what tends to happen. And you may find this difficult to believe. If I were to put an arbitrary figure on it, I would say not up to 5% of civil servants have access to the kind of resources you've described. No, I, I wouldn't disagree. I those, disagree that, those that do are the, the DFAs, mm -hmm. the Directors mm -hmm. of Finance and Accounts. Yeah. And, and, and it's because they are in a joint enterprise. With the, with the politicians. <laughs> with the politicians. No, I will disagree. Yeah, no. they are in a joint yeah. enterprise with the politicians. So, so when you have, the, when you have a, the, the director of finance and accounts, and you have a PEMSEC, and you have a minister, and you have pressure from the villa, of course the director is going to say, okay, if I'm going to facilitate this 100 naira. Am I a fool? Uh, exactly. That's I'm going to take at least 20 naira out of it. That's what tends to happen. Mm. Uh, so, but, <clears throat> but like I said, uh, um, we, we mustn't excuse that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we mustn't be in a situation where uh, people are living above their means. Uh, the challenge that I find is that I know a lot of, I know a lot of civil servants who retired with their names intact. Mm. Um, and, it, and, and who are, you know, they're not well off mm -hmm. at all. You, you get permanent secretaries, retired permanent secretaries who cannot pay for their drugs. That's they, true. they can't pay for their, That's true. I, their, I, I their know, diabetes I, medicines. I, I they can't, they simply yeah. don't have the money, right? Um, 
But what happened was that when they were in service, mm. there were certain perks that meant they were able to at least survive. So you, 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 you go for foreign travel. Um, you lived in a house in Metama as official quarters, mm. right? All of those have been taken away. All of those are gone. Yeah. So, with the so, monetization policy of uh, with the monetization of policy, yeah. So you are left with, as a pemsec, a salary of some eight hundred thousand naira. That's what you are left with, mm. you know. So, so this is this is what I I find. And those that have chosen, mm. um, either either those that have chosen not to be corrupt, or those that were not in places where they had an opportunity to be, uh, are actually not doing well at all. I know many of them; mm. they're not doing well at all. So. But what then happens is that the few yeah. we know about that own hotels and, you know, have children in expensive schools abroad create the impression, the impression. that that's how Any everybody is. Just like the way we, just like the way we, uh, 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 the way we mismanage resources in Nigeria mm. will make it impossible for you to convince anybody that we're not a rich country. Mm. You, it will be impossible. True, you know. So, so, and that's because the little we have, we we spend it lavishly. We spend it without common sense. So, because of that, how do you then say to someone that, oh, we we don't have, we don't have no, any no money. money. You you you've we, just we, bought, you've just bought, uh, you just spent hundred and sixty million naira each to buy to buy SUVs. jeeps to buy SUVs for legislators. Well, right. How then do you mean? What then do you mean? You can't pay minimum wage of 30,000 naira. Mm. This is the problem that that, uh, that we've created. So so how, how do we sort it out, you know? What what, what has to happen? Well, <clears throat> well what what has you mean with regards to the to, to the to the corruption in the public sector and the issue of the uh the 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 their conditions of service their generation okay. okay so 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 what is to happen is is this in my view we need to constrain the opportunities for corruption mm. you know pe people say oh uh, people are corrupt because they are underpaid that is that is assuming that that corruption is 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 as a result of need if corruption was as a result of, of need, need. The, the rich would not steal. Yeah. Right? Because they actually They're don't have rich. a need. Yeah. They have enough. Uh, some will say, oh, uh, corruption is as, a, is, is as a result of greed. Well, there's an element of, of greed in everyone. Everybody wants more than, they, they, they more, really than need. more than they actually need. The issue is, is there an opportunity? If mm. you, so, so long as you put the goat and the yam together, the goat will eat the yam. It doesn't matter how much you pontificate. Except you put something you know, straight in the front of the goat. Of look, some sort. Yeah, your head is to, going down. Exactly. So we need to constrain these opportunities for, for, for corruption. Uh, and that's why, you know, the work that, that ICPC, uh, does, I think is underrated. The, the system studies they do to try and find the loopholes. Through which this uh, this corruption can be, be perpetrated. Good. I think we need to do more of that. We like the we like the big bang mm. uh, corruption approach. Somebody is in handcuffs, and we want to see all that. Mm. Fantastic! It's important. We, you need to signal yeah. that corruption is is, is, not is is not acceptable, and that nobody is above the law. Um, but you equally need to put in as much effort as possible into constraining corruption. And, and one, of the, one of the main ways to do that is through the use of technology. Because technology mm. does two things. A, it minimizes human contact. B, it has an audit trail. You can actually tell who did what, right. yeah. when. That's what I think we need we to need focus to more on. Excellent. You know, thank you so much. Last question, because, uh, you know, you won't, you'll be surprised how much time we spent already. Um, so there's quite a bit of uh, coordination snafu in the current administration. So, so you will see an announcement today, a reversal tomorrow, quite a bit of, of that happening. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as somebody that has, uh, you know, uh, a, a development professional and somebody that has worked in the public service, what will you say to the president to fix what would be your recommendation to him if you agree that there's quite a bit of coordination snafu? To be honest with you, when I when I see all of those, and I agree that there's a, a, a major communication and coordination lapse. Right. But when I see that coordination lapse and, and the extent of it, the one thing that comes to my mind is the administration is bypassing the civil service. Mm. If the civil service works, 
those things will not happen. You mm -hmm. will not have somebody appointed today and then, oh, it's a reverse yeah. tomorrow. Somebody would have done some due no, diligence no, of some it. sorts, right? Somebody would have, you know, you need to, when the civil service works, it actually works excellently well. That's true. There are certain things, even down to the wording in letters, mm. there, are, there are reasons why particular words are used in particular places. So, so for the president to be complaining that, oh, people are just walking into the Federal Executive Council, mm. he doesn't know who is who, that tells you that the, the PEMSEC Cabinet Secretariat is either not there or mm. not being allowed to work. That tells you that the, the Office of the Chief of Staff is not functioning as it should. Mm. The office of the uh, private secretary to the president is not functioning as it should. Mm. And, and, and this happens quite often yeah. when a government comes in believing that everything that went before was it's, wrong. Uh, yeah. So, so I, I would say go back, get the civil service to function, and then you won't have as many difficulties I mean, as you do. Interesting. I, I, I like how we handed up on the issue of the civil service. So it's a big deal, you know, uh, uh, we get the kind of public service that we that is in place. So if we don't fix the civil service, it's, it's, it's gonna be a challenge for, for even the political administration, you know, to, to function. Thank you so much uh, you. for your time and, and, and the brilliance of your contributions, you know, you know and uh, uh, that is why we always say here that, uh, you know, hashtag Nigeria will prevail. You know, and we will not relent. We will continue to, you know, uh, put out the issues and try to address uh, our leaders and the people, you know, that we are in need together, both the government, the, the governed and the, and the, uh, the governors, the government and the people. Thank you so much. Thank you, for coming. Thank you so much. And it's great to be interviewed by someone who's been in the battle. <laughs> I think it's probably the first time I'm being interviewed by, by well, such a first. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a, it's a privilege to, to have you and it's been a very useful conversation. Thanks, Larry. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And that, that is uh, Inside Sources uh, for this week. Uh, like we always say, hashtag Nigeria will prevail. We will continue to discuss the issues and we have the implicit belief that this country will reach that greatness, partly because all of us will not give up. Thank you so much. My name is Nadwa Kodi. I'll see you next week.